Hello, everybody. Welcome to API Heritage Month. I am live here on Meryl's account. My name is Sarah Shimazaki. I am about to invite Mo Fung to be in this live. So here we go. All right, thanks so much for joining us. We're just waiting for Mo to join. Oh, there they are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Yay, nice to so see you. Nice to see you too. Awesome. Cool. I had a moment at the beginning where I clicked the button and nothing was happening. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, technology. <laughs> yeah. But here we are. Here um, we are. So, welcome and welcome to everyone who's joining us. My name is Sarah Shimazaki, pronouns she, her. And I am the host and creator of an awesome podcast called Outside Voices. You should check us out at Outside Voices Podcast. And we amplify voices from Black, Indigenous, and people of color in the outdoors. And I'm here uh, with Mo for Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month, which we are celebrating for all of May. Ooh. And I'm really excited. Yeah, woo! It is officially, <laughs> yeah, this is the first of a series. We're going to be doing this every Wednesday at uh, 1 p.m. in my time zone. I'm in Oakland, California. Um, so 1 p.m. every Wednesday, Pacific time. And um, I'm super, yeah, super excited to be joined here by Mo. So I want to just give the floor over to Mo to introduce themselves. And then we're just going to kind of dive in. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone that's tuned in. My name is Mo Fung. Um, my pronouns are they, them. Um, I am tuned in right now from Jabuktuk in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So Sarah and I are very, 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 very far away from each other right now, <laughs> physically. Um, and yes, I am an ambassador with Morale Canada, and we are launching this collaboration together for Asian Heritage Month and all sorts of layers. Um, I grew up um, in a small coastal town. Um, I study marine bio and ocean technology and have kind of this ongoing exploration of what my relationship is with the outdoors and in ocean environments and what it feels like to be in my body now. Um, and so I'm really excited to kind of talk to you about that and, and talk to you about the influences from, from my family and kind of my upbringing and, and where I am now. So I'm super, super stoked to be chatting with you for your first series chat. <laughs> ah, you're the first one. <laughs> We're so excited to have you here. And before we get into it, uh, just a couple things. One, I see a lot of people using the chat. So thanks. Thanks for saying hi and sending us hearts. Uh, oh, there, <laughs> there they go, more hearts. I do want to say, if you have any questions, we do have someone monitoring the chat. Um, so feel free to pop them in there and we'll have some time at the end to answer. I hope we're going to try. <laughs> yes. When Mo and I first talked, was it last week? I think uh, last week, yeah. Yeah, we just kept talking and talking and talking. So we're like, how are we going to do this in 30 minutes? I don't know. but <laughs> yeah. We should have been on an Instagram Live last week. And that right. It would have been funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and then something I do want to just acknowledge also before we go into it. So, you know, May is API Heritage Month, but also today, May 5th, is the National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and girls and, and two-spirit relatives. And so just want to turn your attention, uh, Native Women's Wilderness account has some really important information about this day and some calls to action of what you can do um, in response to this, this crisis in this country. So just wanted to make sure to acknowledge that that is an important aspect of today as well. So how I always like to begin these kinds of conversations like at Outside Voices and these IG Live is to just start with just some of your earliest memories outside, like your childhood, baby Mo, 
<laughs> baby what, mo. Did, what did that look like? Yeah. I'm like the newborn baby mo right now. So I'm like super <laughs> confused, figuring it out. Um, yeah, I, I've been kind of thinking about this in other like layers of my work, but it's kind of feels blurry in what ages I would have been, but I do have this very, very vivid memory of being maybe five or so. And growing up, we, I don't know, I always remembered us kind of tagging along with other families while they did like outdoorsy things and, and learning kind of what, what you're supposed to do when you like go have, like a picnic or a fire or go camping or something. And we had these, we had a really, really good um, pair of humans named Ivan and Linda and they had a camp and we would always go there to, you know, fish on the river and kind of be outside in the woods because we lived in town. And I can almost even like, I feel it like standing on the back of a truck while my dad was driving really slow down a dirt road to get to this camp. So it was like, I don't know, a couple kilometers on a bumpy road. And I remember being, yeah, so small, sticking my arms out to try to feel the leaves and like grab leaves. And my brother was standing next to me. And I don't know, it feels like a scene of a movie where you just feel so free and you don't even know why or like what that even means. And I do remember being scared of, you know, lakes. I still do have kind of a fear of lakes because they're dark and I don't, I can't see through them like the ocean. And um, specific memories being yeah, by lakes and oceans and learning how to fish and... Yeah, and I think everything's just kind of, I learned a lot by people around me. Mm. Yeah, I still do. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for painting that picture and just the feelings too, just feeling really free, but also at the same time, there's a little bit of fear of the unknown. And it's it's actually really interesting when you said that you still fear lakes, because I know that when we talked last week, you mentioned your relationship to water and um, how you really felt an affinity specifically to water as an element, as a, um, a place in nature. Yeah. It sounds like you're specifically talking about the ocean. And I also see behind you, you have a, a water sacred poster as well. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about water. Yeah. Let's talk about water. <laughs> I like talking about water. Um, I mean, I do want to acknowledge the privilege that I have to be able to access it and the ways that I do. Um, I live in a small city right now that is a coastal city. And yeah, this is so deep into what I'm exploring in my work and my art practice right now about this thing that I mentioned to you last week, where I was like, my identity as a settler on land. And when I'm in the water, thinking about how I'm a settler in the water too. And mm -hmm and how different it is, those two realms for me. Um, and I mostly have been connecting with water in, in kind of like a therapeutic way where snorkeling and being underwater and, and just like floating. I love floating on the water with my eyes closed or swimming down to the bottom and turning my body to look up to the surface when it's mm. so quiet. And that's probably one of my favorite, favorite sensations. I don't even know how to describe it, but I feel complicated feelings now that I'm, you know, having more time to reflect on what the ocean means to me because yes, it's really good in the ways that it's therapeutic, that it's beautiful, it's serene, it brings peace, it's like healing. But also when I think about it in the context of my family, the ocean was, you know, a passageway that was violent and almost fatal and stormy and the only option, you know. And so mm -hmm. I'm feeling these things come up in my, in my creative work where I'm thinking about that and how 
trying to see if, if and how much I'm carrying in my body of, in that way and how it translates to how I feel in the water now. Um, like most of my, not most, but there's a handful of my family members that don't know how to swim. And they were, I know over the years, they're always like, wow, like you're so brave for diving and snorkeling and like being in the water. And like, I wish that I could be like, do that with you. And I think I always felt that my family wasn't like adventurous or really wanted to be outdoors in that way. But I remember my mom telling me maybe like a year or two ago, and it was really surprising to me. And she said, like, I'm really proud of you for, you know, being adventurous and going for hikes and camping and doing all these things. Like, I really wish that I had the opportunity to do that. But, you know, it wasn't the same. Like, you didn't have, like, the luxury of having extracurriculars or things outside of your house and your school. And and so I've been thinking about that a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I know when we talked last week, we sort of um... – we both talked about our families and how just kind of this reshifting of what it means to be adventurous or outdoorsy and to spend time outside. Cause my mom says similar things to me, right? My mom grew up in the yeah. Philippines and she just is like, wow, it's really cool. You go backpacking and camping, but you know, like she tried to get away from that stuff. Right. When, when they moved to uh, the United States they didn't want to sleep outside, right? And yeah. um, so it doesn't really, it, it didn't occur to her growing up that that was something you do for fun. Um, and yeah. so, when, but then when I talked to her about growing up in the Philippines, you know, she ran around barefoot, she climbed coconut trees, she spent all her time outside, right? Even though her mom warned her, like, your, your skin's going to get too dark if you're in the sun. Like colorism is very rampant in the Philippines. And she didn't want her to be have dark skin. So she said, don't yeah. spend outside, time outside. But she was just out there. And I think that's, that's really outdoorsy. And I'm sure that your parents <laughs> probably, even though they might not think that they're doing like camping or other activities, they probably spent a lot of their childhood outside too. Yeah, definitely. Like my mom was like riding water buffaloes. Like that's so much more badass than anything that I do right now. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love out. to see. Yeah, I I know that you mentioned that um and we're going to talk about this just getting them um some gear actually shout out to Meryl. Yeah, um, so that they could be outside and go on these amazing walks and it just I just got an image of like them wearing Meryl shoes while riding walks. <laughs> <laughs> that would be some good content for yeah. Meryl just saying, but <laughs> Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, they um, they are so stoked about their gear. I was FaceTiming my mom yesterday, actually, because some of the gear came to me, and I mailed it down to where they live now. And they're, like, sending photos of themselves in the gear, and they're going to test it out this weekend and go for a long walk. And, yeah, I'm really excited to be able to see them again. And, um, yeah, hopefully make it through this. We'll make it through this lockdown and then um, be able to, like, go for a nice long walk together and be outdoors, outdoors together. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's talk about them a little more because your parents immigrated to Canada from Vietnam, right? Yeah. And so what, what has their relationship to the outdoors looked like? So, yeah, I think... I've only talked to them about this maybe once or so, like kind of briefly after we talked last week, just kind of seeing, you know, like I, we don't really talk about the what the outdoors means or what other things mean to us in like a deeply emotional conversation kind of way. And so my parents said that the outdoors is very good and like beautiful. And, and then I was trying to think about it more where like, right now they're so lucky to be able to have a garden and a yard and so i'm really really excited that they can do that because i think the outdoors to them right now is growing food like sustenance mm -hmm. and enjoying that it doesn't feel like 
it, you have to do it. Like maybe they had to do it in Vietnam. Like my dad grew up on shrimp fishing, for shrimp farms and it like growing food in the garden was work. And I know that it is still in a lot of ways, but it's more of kind of a leisure thing that they can enjoy. And um, when I still lived at home, they, um, they didn't work on Sundays. And so every Sunday morning, um, we'd go for a long walk on the trail and they still do that together, even though that my siblings and I haven't lived home f in over a decade or more. And so I think it means, you know, having some time to breathe and not think about work and not think about how, you know, you're going to pay the bills or how, everyone around you is doing and just kind of like enjoying where you are in the moment and you know just moving your body in in, in a small way that you can yeah yeah definitely. and I know you mentioned that they want another thing they do with that connection to the outdoors they go on walks right yeah every Sunday morning is their walk day so yeah and how are they, they're, um, they're excited, right, with, like, the new, their new shoes and all that. To, <laughs> yeah, to so they're, they're going to test them out this weekend. I, um, I, I was like, take some pictures while you're on your walk. And I hope it is rainy. I think it's looking a little rainy here this weekend. And, and both of the shoes that they got are waterproof because I was like, we need waterproof shoes if we're going to live in Nova Scotia because – it can rain and snow and be sunny in one day. So, um, yeah, I'm so excited that they can have something nice like that. Um, because, you know, I, I felt, I was talking to my sister about this yesterday and, um, I'm really happy to be able to collaborate with morale and give gift them these items, because if I were to buy them as gifts for them, it would be so, it would cost a lot of money, you know, like it's really nice, it's a nice thing to give them that they'll use that they feel like is really new and special. And it's from something that I'm doing and work that I love. And I think like having that meaningfulness behind it and they're so excited. Like I just, we don't, we haven't done this before together and I'm excited to keep growing on this journey with morale. And um, yeah, I'm excited to just see the sneakers. I want to go for a walk with them so bad. Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of far from you, right? Like a couple It's not hours too drive? bad. Yeah, it's like a three hour drive, but we are not, can't travel between our counties right now. So, yeah. And is I that something? See... Oh, go no, ahead. No, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say I can see some cute messages from some of my friends in the chat, and I was just not noticing them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Love that. And all the hearts that pop up too. Thank you. Yeah. All the love, everybody, and for tuning in. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say, is that something that they, those walks every Sunday, is that something they also did in their home country in Vietnam? Do you know? I don't know that. I don't know. I think, like, I know my dad would walk or bike everywhere. Um, it's, I don't know how far away from water that they lived when they were together. When my dad grew up, he was, his hometown had kind of like low marsh areas, like shrimp farm areas. And so um, walking to like around where he worked wasn't very far, but, um, you know, there's spans and miles of beaches there that they always talked about and being able to be on like a scooter or motorcycle or getting to those places. I'm not sure like what their relationship is like in terms of like, kind of like what you said, like it's not like a recreational thing. It's kind of like survival, survival, living. <laughs> survival. Like it's not like a fun thing to do to go for a hike. That's like, what my dad had to do when he was escaping the country, you know, like he was hiking for days and on boats for days, like 
I don't know what that relationship was like. And so I would, I'm curious about that. And, yeah. and, and yeah, thanks yeah. for asking that. <laughs> yeah, that's super outdoorsy in my book. Cause um, I know, so there's some questions that people did ask uh, in, in the last day since we posted a little question sticker on Meryl's page. Oh yeah. And okay, one cool. of them actually speaks to that which is um, what would you tell someone who doesn't think they're an outdoorsy person? And mm. I feel like that relates really well. Like if your dad thinks, for example, that he's not outdoorsy, but then he did this very outdoorsy thing, right? What would you say to him or anyone else who thinks that? Yeah, I like struggle with this still. Um, I, I'm kind of self-conscious about it a little bit. And that's, I think, is why I'm really excited about this partnership is because it's motivating me to be more confident about my body and my, me and the outdoors because, like, I lived with some folks a few years ago, like, two of my white friends, and they were, like, the most outdoorsy um like had all the gear, had been like camping and canoeing and, and doing all these things their whole lives. I never went camping once with my family. Like that wasn't a thing that we did or had gear to do. Like I would go camping with friends. Um, and I remember just feeling like, I didn't talk about it, but I was just always trying to be like, trying to live up to their standard of what outdoorsy was, you know, outdoorsy was. And I remember going on a super long hike, like, I think it was like a five hour hike in and a five hour hike out. Wow. And um, I was so far behind. And I just told them to keep going. And I was like, I'm just I'm just gonna be here. Like, I'll see you when I see you. And I just it was the most defeating hike. And I was alone for a lot of it. And I was super questioning, like my ability like, why I'm here? Am I good enough? Am I like, why does everyone I look not, not look like me that I'm walking past on this trail, you know, and like, we're camping out there. And it's a very, like, you know, predominantly white environmental culture out here, like hiking and, you know, yeah, kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I would just tell this person and I'll tell myself this is to like do what feels good for you in your body where you are outside and and really try not to let others kind of define your image and what that means like being not outdoorsy enough like that statement shouldn't even exist you know and so it's not about having all the gear or having you know all the nicest stuff to go on a camping trip or a hike but it's like if you're out there to make yourself feel better or to like see something like birds or different flowers and trees if you're just out there to like take a minute to yourself like you're outdoorsy that's what out being outdoors means to me I think totally yeah, yeah thank you we have a kind of a fun one, I think, question, which is, <laughs> where is the place you've taken your favorite photo of the ocean? Oh, geez. <laughs> it's funny. I think, oh, it's a tie, I think, between here in Nova Scotia and where I learned to dive was in Mozambique. And I was doing an internship there to learn how to do underwater photography. And at the end of my trip, I lost all my photos because my hard drive broke. And so honestly, there's probably amazing photos that I took there and I don't know, I don't know. But um, I think in Nova Scotia, I love taking pictures of seaweed. Um, and the like, I have like an underwater film camera and a digital housing for a digital camera. And so seeing what water looks like in a digital camera versus a film camera is really, really cool. So I'm excited for the weather to get a little warmer and then I want to get in the water and, and play around. Yeah. yeah. 
I love the the selfies that you took in the ocean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like those, too. Yeah, snorkeling <laughs> and, like, just playing around in the water like that is so fun. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I think we probably have time for maybe one or two more. So we have a question that came in through the chat, which is, how has increased awareness of anti-Asian racism impacted your climate justice work? So in Both. regard to there's a demand, an opportunity, and support. Yeah. I mean, my climate justice and equity work hasn't included anti-Asian racism in it until right now, like within the last, you know, month or so. And so it's just, it's just new. It's going to be an integration that I'm committed to and conversations that I want to have with my team and with my peers. And um, I'm really, really grateful and I'm deeply saddened by all of the things that are going on. But, you know, the, the thing of how something bad has to happen for people to learn about it, know about it, to do something about it. And I think that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like, I don't know everything there is to know about anti-Asian racism or hate, but I'm gonna like pour myself into that. And I think I, I am right now and I'm like really tired and, but I, this is the work that I wanna do. Um, and I want to like still like stay in it and just and this whole month, I think, is going to be, like, super, super life-changing in my work. And I'm really, really excited about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you do, for the space that you're taking up, for your voice. And we're, I'm just really happy to have this conversation with you. Yeah, we you are, too. Yeah, we are pretty much almost at time. Um, but be sure to follow Mo if you uh, don't or already have their Instagram handle, which I believe is at Mo Fung, right? At Mo Fung, yeah. Okay, yeah. Be sure to follow Mo. <laughs> yes, hashtag stop Asian hate. I can't see. Can you see? I can see it, but it's backwards for me a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case for anyone else, but... <laughs> But I can still tell I tried. what it said. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. This was this is really great. It was too short. I, I really I think how, that. It's been a half an hour already. <laughs> also, follow uh, future ancestors. 